Marciano and I'm going to show you today how to trim a cylinder on the potter's wheel. Um, please make sure that when you're looking at this video you're paying close attention to what this looks like so that you can also um, try to do the same when it comes to trimming your cylinders. So the setup is the same. I have my splash pans on my wheel, um, dry clean wheel head. I have my cylinder um, dried to leather hard. Leather hard means that the clay is um, stiff enough that it can hold its own form, but it's still damp enough to carve into. And my lip is nice and flat when I threw it, so that way when I put it upside down on the wheel head, it doesn't wobble in any way. So the first step you're gonna have, or have to do, is to center your pot back on the wheel. Now, a lot of wheel heads have lines on them, and that kind of helps center your pot. So I'm gonna turn my wheel on and very slowly, I just wanna see where the um, pot hits my finger. If it doesn't drag evenly, it means the pot's not centered yet. So I need to move the pot until it's centered. I've had students in the past actually um, draw with a tool. They actually draw a circle on the bottom and they look at the circle and say, okay, it looks like it's moved a little to the left or right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move my pot in that way. Over time, you realize how to move it to get it to be a little bit more centered. Now, this is actually a perfect example of what you guys are gonna have to go through, especially in the beginning of throwing or trimming your thrown cylinders because they're not perfectly centered. So it's a little bit more difficult when it comes to centering your uh, your trim cylinders on the wheel. I have four balls of new clay. Um, it's not too wet that's going to stick to the clay, but it's not too hard that it's not going to stick to the wheel head. Once this is centered, I'm going to go ahead and take two pieces on either side and push down onto the wheel head, not the pot itself, the wheel head. You don't want to warp the pot in any way. The clay is going to um, make the pot sit and stay wherever you choose it to be. So I'm going to go ahead, I did two sides, and slowly rotate my wheel and do the other two sides. You want to make sure that the clay isn't too high up because you're going to be trimming this area. So if your clay, these balls of clay come up too far, too high up, then it's difficult to trim so kind of keep that in mind too so we press them down onto the wheel head and it's not gonna move I also have two types of loop tools I have a um, pear shaped brand new actually very snazzy um, loop tool it's my bigger loop tool of the two and I also have the smaller loop tool I like to use the um, corner, the triangle shaped side, especially when it comes to straight walls, nice straight edge. That's what I'm going to be wanting to use. Now I first start off by trimming the sides. If you have a big loop tool, it should be for a big area, which is going to be the sides of my, of my cylinder. So I'm holding, my thumbs are together, my elbows are into my body, when I lean over everything is connected, same as when you're throwing on the wheel. And I want to make sure that my tool stays nice and parallel to the wall so it starts to take away some clay. If it comes off in like um, apple shavings like it is now, you've done a good job when it comes to making sure your pot didn't dry out completely. This actually is a little on the dry side, you could probably go a little bit more wet. Um, if it comes off in like, like chocolate shavings, you know when you like grade chocolate, comes off these little shavings, that's no good, it means you've dried out your pot too much. Having a nice sharp tool also helps. If I was using a dull tool, I wouldn't be able to trim this as well. So as I go down, as I'm going down this way with my loop tool, I also wanna make sure that I loosen up the grip so that it's kind of gradual. You don't want this big ring showing where you stop trimming. So I give a little bit more pressure towards the top. And as I go down, I kind of gradually release that pressure so it's more of a gradation. Trimming is important, um, it's necessary, but we don't want to see the trimming marks. So it does take some practice when it comes to having that happen. You will see some trimming marks at first, but just do your best to try to avoid them. 
my hand is nice and steady. What's nice about loop tools, they are made for your hands. So notice how the ball, the bottom part of this handle fits really nicely in my palm. That's how I'm holding the tool. And then my pointer finger does all the work when it comes to the amount of pressure being put onto the tool. You'll never trim the lip of your cylinder. You never trim the inside. Um, you're only trimming the bottom portion of your cylinder or any piece that you're going to trim on the wheel. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take a teeny tiny layer off the top. Just to make sure it's nice and smooth. And it's always a little easier to see this from a distance. So you guys actually have a better view than I do. So I'm going to get up and kind of look at it to make sure the profile is correct. So we want to make sure there's enough clay in the bottom to trim without going through. And I checked it before I put it on the wheel. That is a recommendation. So actually feel the bottom and the sides before you put it on the wheel head and center it. That way you can have an idea as to how much clay you have to work with. And then the other thing that you can do is tap it. The higher the thud, the thinner the base is. So if there's a really low thud, then you have a lot of clay to work with. I don't have so much clay to work with. So um, I need to make sure I don't take away too much clay on my bottom that I'm gonna create a hole. So I have a nice, smooth, flat base nice vertical walls and that's when I'm going to go ahead and take my smaller loop tool. I want to create a ring with a line so I take my tool and I drag it. The, the wheel is doing all the work for me and it creates this circle and I always tell my students that the ring, the outside of that circle, you do not touch. You're only trimming the circle part. What that's going to do is it's going to allow the cylinder to sit nice and flat on that ring and remember that whole compression that compressing the base when you're throwing on the or when you're throwing a cylinder or any pot on the wheel or pressing down into the base when the clay starts to dry it sometimes actually warps in the middle because of that compression because of overall drying your clay out so it's important to also trim a little bit away so it relies on sitting on that ring instead of on the middle of your pot so taking my two hands, nice and steady, starting in the middle. I kind of drag it in the middle just to make sure I don't have a raised area in the middle of my pot. And then just very carefully bringing that tool out to where I made that line for the circle. You want to make sure your wheel is going fast enough. If you go too slow, First off, you, it's going to take forever for you to be able to move your tool because you have to do everything to all areas of the cylinder. So if you move your, your wheel faster, then you can move your tool slightly faster. Again, I'm trying to keep my tool as parallel as possible, nice and horizontal. shavings. Hear the higher thud slightly? I'm feeling it. You can also actually start to feel the thickness once you get um, some practice in. So I'm going to go one more time. So I said before that you want to make sure we don't actually see trimming. But when you do trim, it should be purposeful. So on the bottom, on that ring, I actually like to make sure it's a nice crisp edge. It looks like I meant to do it. And I take my tool, starting to make just a little bit more of an intentional ridge. Getting away all my crummies. All right. And the last step I like to do, do you see this nice sharp edge? I'm actually going to create a bevel. Um, this edge will be extremely sharp after bisque firing and then when you put it on a surface it's going to want to scratch that surface. Um, a bevel is also helpful when it comes to glazing. So if we create this bevel then when we go to glaze 
we're gonna clean off that bevel and it's gonna make a really nice, smooth, um, even cleaned edge when we trim. So take your smaller um, flat edge loop tool and you're literally just gonna cut off that corner. I always like to take my fingers and kind of round out the edges the best I can, just slightly to make sure there's no burrs or any sharp points. All right, this all looks good. You can also test to see if you've trimmed off enough by taking it off the wheel, putting it right side up, and if you, um, actually no, I'm sorry, if you put, <laughs> If you put a tool, a flat tool, which I don't have one in front of me, but if you put a flat tool on top and then you look down and if you see some light coming through all the way around, then you've trimmed enough. If you still have a high point right in the middle, right in here, then you haven't trimmed enough yet. That's another trick to kind of see if you've trimmed enough off your pot. I'm still seeing a little bit of a high point right here, which is bothering me. So trimming may take more time than you think, and it may be just little itty bitty adjustments more so than on the wheel when we do so much in a small amount of time. So once you're completely satisfied, um, you're going to go ahead and take a tool to write your name. I do not recommend a needle tool, so use some type of stylus. If you use a needle tool, it creates a really sharp edge and that's no good. Write your name on the bottom, date, whatever else you want to put. If you're putting it to someone, sometimes I recommend actually writing it in. It's a little bit more personal, All right? And then you can gently take away the clay. Now you are not done. You're done trimming, but you're not done with your pot yet. The most important part of ceramics is making sure the craft is really well made. So it's important that all these finger marks that you're seeing all in there, this all needs to be cleaned up. The lip needs to be cleaned up. The inside has some bag marks on the inside. I need to take my little yellow sponge and I need to actually start to clean and wipe away any of those finger marks. Remember I told you you'd have that opportunity to take away those finger marks that you made when you took your pot off the wheel after throwing? Now is your time. Take as much time as you need when it comes to craftsmanship. It's the most important part. You can make a beautiful piece, and then if you don't take the time to make sure it looks like it's well made, no one's gonna appreciate it. So take the time to do a lot of craftsmanship, really round out that lip, and when it's totally finished, you can actually leave it upright on a shelf. Um, probably not your wheel head, because you're gonna wanna do more on it later, but um, on your shelf, just upright, and wait until it gets bone dry. All right, so if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, go practice.